Good morning. Hello, everybody. I think we have more than 12 here than this morning. Praise the Lord. There's <laughs> well, welcome to Sacred Ground, and thank you for all being here. Welcome to the Facebook Live people. And uh, we need to begin with prayer. First thing off, hello. So, Heavenly Father, we come to you, and just even as we were playing that song, it was scripted. Um, we look to the heavens for help. We look to you, Lord, for you are great and you are awesome. You are mighty in all your ways. Lord, we, we ask for you to come and rescue us, as only you can do, Lord. You are our Savior. You are huge. There's nothing too big for you, Lord. And we welcome you into this place. We pray that you be glorified and exalted, that by your Spirit, these chairs would be filled Sunday by Sunday, even into eternity, Lord. We're going to be with you forever. Thank you for all the saints who have been here in the past, maybe who are in heaven even today, and rejoicing, Lord. We ask for angelic help today as we worship you, as we praise your name, as we read and hear your word, Lord, help us to grow in the faith that you give us. And we praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, we're going to have some announcements. Anybody got announcements going on before we start to worship? We have a baby shower on Saturday at 2 o'clock here for Ashley. Okay. I, I might want to take this. I'm trying to learn. Let's have you, uh, for all the people who want to hear that. The baby shower Saturday at 2 o'clock for Ashley Freeman's here. It's a little uh, baby girl. <coughs> That's this coming Saturday, a baby shower for Ashley. And anything else? <coughs> Guitar Circle, uh, Monday still? Um, I'm available we'll next Monday. Okay. So we'll maybe get that going back again the, uh, tomorrow. Uh, anything else? Well, let's worship the Lord. I think there's 14 of us. <laughs> New world record. <clears throat> but you know, um, you look throughout the Bible, battles weren't won with numbers. Battles were won by the Spirit of the Lord. And so the Spirit of the Lord is here with us this morning. I don't know if you have battles, but it seems like all of us have had battles here lately with health and you know with all sorts of things. And and that comes. That comes with the cross. It does. It comes with the cross. There's going to be battles. Jesus said that we're going to have our crosses to carry too. But how wonderful it is that we don't have to carry our cross alone. Amen. Amen. And we get to help each other along the way too. So we're going to start uh, first thing this morning with a song called Ride the Wind. It has to do with walking, running, battling, being with the Holy Spirit in all his different ways of being with us. So it's a great song of hope, it's a great song of victory, and it's a great song of being with the Lord. Yeah. 
Anybody got a praise or a, a short testimony? A good time for that. Or a small group? Close? If you do, we can have time for it. I know a place, a wonderful place, where accused and condemned find mercy and grace. Where the wrongs we have done and the wrongs done to us were nailed there with him there on the cross at the cross the cross he died for our sin at the cross at the cross he gave us life again at the
Psalm 121, we were talking about the Psalms this morning, how lovely they are, how wonderful they are, and how God is true, how He is holy and worthy to be praised, and we, we need to lift our eyes up because He hears us, and He smiles on us with His favor, even as we sing. So it's good. So just to call and repeat. I lift my eyes up, my eyes up, unto the heavens, unto the heavens. Where does my help come from?
the sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Amen. Yes. Amen to that. Thank you, drummers. And again, thank you all for being here. That was one of my life verses. I was <clears throat> in my Frito Lay truck at the Aquinnah Bay Bridge, and I was watching the waves, and I was reading that psalm, and I was pondering my decision as to what I should do. Should I move on from my job and take one that I was uncomfortable with and unfamiliar with? And I read the last verse, and it was just like the Lord spoke to me. And he said, I will watch your guard. I will watch your going out and your coming in. I will guard you. I will protect you. I will be with you. And that was the promise that I needed from the Lord to, to take that leap of faith, to move from my security, if you will, into my insecurity and not knowing where it's going to go. So I love Psalm 121. In fact, at the radio station, we had, you all know, we had some leaks going on and Someone would put a piece of tape right above the studio, a piece of tape up there, and I slipped it up my eyes once, and I go, oh, that should say Psalm 121. So I got up on the desk, and I wrote Psalm 121. So now when you lift your eyes up to the, to the station ceiling, you can see Psalm 121. So Heavenly Father, we do lift our eyes to you, because you are the maker of all things. Lord, you have designed this day. You have made this day. You have made us, Lord. You saw us even before we were created in our mother's womb. And you love us. And you call us. And you want to partner with us. And Lord, we say thank you for all of that. And thank you for your wonderfulness and your goodness to us, Lord. We fail and we are weak, but you are strong and you never fail. Ever, ever, ever. And so we pray that as we open your word to exalt your name, that your spirit would help us to understand and would teach us and guide us in all things. We love you, Lord, and we welcome you here to this place. In Jesus' name. Well, Pastor Dave should be preaching today, but he is a part of the families that have gotten sick recently, and Kelly was to be leading worship, and she's a part of the family, and Sam has also been that family, has been quarantined, so... Um, we didn't even have our service yesterday, our scripture reading at 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock. I put a note on the door. Did anybody show up to see the note? I didn't think so. <laughs> well, now I can say yes. Now you can say yes. <laughs> well, I, I put right on there, if you needed to call me, or if you wanted to still meet at 7 o'clock, call me and we could go over to my pole barn. And, and uh, I lit a fire and kind of had it kind of warmed up, um, just in case. So that's become a, a sweet time, and I, I think I said longingly to Kelly, you know, Pastor Rick was there like all the time, and uh, he was making this coffee and warming up the building for us, and it's actually been about 50 days, I think, since Rick passed. I counted them out, because I was marking the, the 40 days after which we voted and I was to take his place, and so... I'm thinking that the 40 days is significant. It is a significant time. You know, Moses was on the mountain receiving God's word for 40 days and 40 nights. A couple times he went there because he had to break the tablets when the people were sitting with the golden calf. And Elijah, when Elijah defeated the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel and Queen Jezebel said, I'm going to kill you. And so he ran for his life. And after 40 days and 40 nights, he found himself hiding in a cave. And of course, we know that Jesus uh, was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights being tempted. And of course, there's always the, the children of Israel who are in the desert wandering in the wilderness for 40 days. And a new one I thought about was when Jesus appeared, when he was resurrected after the cross, he appeared to the people about 40 days before he ascended. And so there's something significant about 40 days. And so I want to go there. And if you'd open your Bibles with me, to Matthew 4, 
And we're going to talk about the temptation of Christ. This morning in Sunday school, we talked about John the Baptist leading the way and preparing the way for the Lord. And of course, Jesus came to John the Baptist to be baptized. And so, Matthew 4, verse 1, it says that Jesus was led by the Spirit in the desert to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. You think? <laughs> I mean, we can fast for maybe a day. And I am fasting today, not for spiritual purposes, but I get to have a full of those with you tomorrow. <laughs> so, and the last one I had seven years ago, I was completely fine. But um, pray for me as I go through that procedure tomorrow morning. So after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus was hungry, and the tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. And Jesus answered the devil, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And some would say when we are facing temptation, it's good to quote Scripture. It's good to come back and say, I'm not listening to you. This is what God says. And Jesus quoted Deuteronomy. Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. So can we actually go 40 days and 40 nights? It would make you hungry, but if he did it, I guess you could. That would be a mighty call to, to a fasting and a prayer. But then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. And I think the devil is quoting Psalm 91. We talked about that psalm this morning as well. So the devil is using God's own words to tempt Jesus. And what did Jesus say? It is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. So Jesus wasn't going to have anything to do with the devil. Because the devil's lips were moving, Jesus knew that he was lying. He's like, you're not telling me what to do. I'm listening to my father. Verse 8, again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give to you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. And Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And then the devil left him, and the angels came and attended to him. And so when we are facing temptation, which we often do, and the devil comes to us in one way or the other, here's three ways you could respond to him. What, what did Jesus say? Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Could Jesus have turned those rocks into bread? Of course he could have. But God didn't tell him to do that. The devil was trying to tell him to do that. He said, no way, I'm not listening. So don't listen to the devil. The second temptation, it is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Jesus knew those words would be true. That he could do that. He could throw himself off the, the high place and the angels would rescue him. But God again hadn't commanded it. So he refuted the devil. And then he took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And he said, you don't have to go to the cross, Jesus. You don't have to do that. I know you don't want to. And he said, get away from me, Satan. It is written. Worship the Lord your God and serve Him only. In my Bible, there's a, a picture of the temple where it says that the devil took Jesus and put Him on the pinnacle of the temple. And, and off on the, it says the southeast corner, there was a big retaining wall because it, it was a mountain that it was built upon. So there was this great fall off from the top of the pinnacle. And I was pondering that uh, once when I, after I had the Lord speak to me through Psalm 121, and I made the commitment to leave my secure job from Frito-Lay and go into real estate. Real estate wasn't a very good thing for me, and I didn't like it much, and 
Kelly's dad, who had the bed and breakfast um, in Aggie Beach, said, you can come work for me and uh, do some painting, do some gardening, whatever. And I go, yes, because I was going to get paid $10 an hour. And I knew that if I was working, I was going to get paid, and that was good enough for me. So at one point, he wanted me to go up on the roof to, uh, I think, to clean some chimneys. And I had done that before at our house. And so I went up on the roof, and we had to go up to like the, the top balcony and get up on the roof from there. And on the top balcony, if you've ever been out to Agate Beach, it falls off into kind of a ravine. <laughs> it's the, uh, the old Agate Beach Woody Way Trail. And it's a big, steep drop. And I remember trying to crawl off that ceiling, that roof, onto the ladder and not fall. It was scared me to death. But it was the southeast corner uh, of, of Ocean House. And uh, kind of interesting that this is the southeast corner of, of the temple. And I've also described the, the radio station. I said, we're in the upper southeast corner of Seatown. They went, oh, no. <laughs> but the devil can't tempt us to do things that God has not asked us to do. So listen to him. Away from me, Satan. For it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve Him only. That's what we want to do at all times. And even with 12 or 14 people here, we can still worship. We can still drum. We can still play our guitars. We can still sing. We can still acknowledge who He is. Though we are weak, He is strong. In every situation, in every case. If it was just us, we would all be toast. But it's not about us, is it? It's about God. What's He going to do? What's He willing to do? What is His will for us? If you want to turn to Ephesians 4, again being 50 days since Rick's passed and now 40 days past the wilderness of me being in charge, I want to say that we're all doing this together. It's, it's not about me. Maybe I've been named the pastor, but I looked up in my Bible, what does it mean to be a pastor? And I looked up in my concordance and it was listed once and it had an asterisk by it. And I go, I wonder what that asterisk means. And so I looked up at the beginning of the concordance and said, if any word has an asterisk by it, it means it's only mentioned once in the scriptures. <laughs> and so that means that pastor is only mentioned once. So I want to tell you that we're a part of a team. We all have a job to do. And as pastor, I want to commission you to do the job that God's called you to do. It's not all dependent upon me. So if you turn to Ephesians 4, it's titled, Unity in the Body of Christ. And it says, As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient. Bearing with one another in love. And make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to men. And what does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. And it was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers. So that's the only place that the pastor is mentioned, that five-fold team of leadership. And why? To prepare God's people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. 
then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up to in Him who is the head, that is Christ. From Him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, it grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. And so I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. You, however, did not come to know Christ that way. Surely you heard of Him and were taught in Him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. We are becoming like Him. We have trials and we have temptations and we have troubles, but when we resist the devil, we are becoming like Jesus. That's a wonderful thing. We are being transformed into His image. And we are a team. As little as we are right now, we, we are a team. And so what did Jesus do when He came away from those 40 days of temptation? And we talked about this this morning too. He went about preaching. And, and what did He preach? Repent and believe. Repent and believe. Turn from your wicked ways. We sing that song quite a bit. Turn from your ways and turn to Him. Open your heart to God and everything that He wants to do through you. Open your heart. God guides us. In fact, I looked up the characteristics of God because I want to focus on who He is and the first part that I looked up as far as God's character is He is the God, the Lord that leads you. He guides you. According to Deuteronomy 8.2 He leads you. Psalm 23 says He makes you lie down in green pastures and He leads you by still waters and He restores your soul. He refreshes your soul and He guides you in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. He is a God who leads us he also is a God who tests us. He wants to know what's in our hearts. We need to know what's in our hearts. According to 2 Chronicles 32, 31. Sometimes there are false and harsh accusations against us. And in the face of those, we must be humble. We must be patient and meek like Christ was. Psalm 35, 11 through 16. So God tests and He refines us according to Psalm 66, 10. God is wise and we are being transformed into to the same image. If God is wise, He's transforming us into wisdom. And God is strong from Proverbs 24, 10. Jesus is humble, not proud, slow to judge, he loves to show mercy and compassion. He resists the proud from Proverbs 27, 21. And God never wears out. He never gets tired. He created horses. He created clouds and cover of thick thickets. That's what it was. He created your family. And we need to trust Him. From Jeremiah 12, 5 and 6. 
God is righteous, not wicked. We need to serve Him. From Malachi 3.18. We do be, become like Him. We believe in His Son. And Jesus was a friend to all. He was a friend to the tax collectors and to the sinners. And he was even accused of being a drunkard and a glut. They said of John the Baptist, he's weird. He doesn't eat or drink. And they said of Jesus, but you hang out with sinners and you drink wine. Must be a drunkard. You must be a glutton. But the wisdom that God has is shown to be right by the results. People are simply looking for an excuse not to believe. They'll accuse you this way or they'll accuse you that way because they don't want to believe. They refuse to accept the truth, the teachings of John the Baptist or of Jesus. They have their own skewed ideas. But God bears good fruit. He is a good tree. God has a, He gives us a kingdom of grace. He loves mercy. He loves to show His love. And that ultimately is God's character. God is love. Based on 1 John 4 8. He's gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love, and abounding in faithfulness. And what is the most powerful act in history, all of history? It's not the dropping of an atomic bomb, but it's when Jesus came for us. God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to live among us, to die for us, and to forgive us. The most powerful act in history. And we thank you, Father, for doing that. Jesus had said, did get angry on occasion, but what did he do when he was on the cross? He said, God forgive them. Father forgive them, for they know not what they do. He gave his life for us. And we need to be like him. I read a prayer from, uh, I, I read Hebrew for Christians every day. And I read a prayer and I thought, this is really good. It's talking about forgiveness and how Jesus went to the cross to forgive our sins if we will but believe in him. And he says, receive forgiveness for your sins, but also forgive others. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And here, here is what was written. Now it's Matthew 6.12. Before offering personal prayer to the Lord, it helps to make the declaration, Master of the universe, I hereby forgive anyone who might have hurt me this day, either physically or emotionally, whether accidentally or intentionally, inadvertently or deliberately, by speech or by deed, whether against my honor or anything else that is mine. May no one be punished because of me. Help me to overlook the faults of others and to always use the good eye, recognizing them and regarding them as you do. And I ask you to forgive me too for my many wrongdoings and failings. May it be your will, Lord my God and God of my Father, that I sin no more, nor repeat my sins, neither shall I again anger you, nor do what is displeasing in your eyes. The sins I have committed, please erase in your abounding mercies for the sake of your Son, Yeshua, the Messiah, my Savior and Lord. Amen. And amen. If a person refuses to confess the truth about his condition, salvation itself is impossible. And we talked about that this morning. You must admit that you're a sinner. You need God. God literally cannot save the soul that denies its need for Him. And we must accept others as we accept ourselves. As broken people who are redeemed and loved by God Himself, and there are no exceptions. So thank you, Heavenly Father, for loving us so much that you died for us, you gave your life for us, and you said, believe, repent and believe, turn from your sin, sin no more, and come to me, follow me. Lord, we thank you that your burden is light. 
and you lead us and you guide us. We pray for all of the things going on across the world right now. Mm -hmm. Lord, we, we pray that you would stop the aggressor. Stop the devil right now in Jesus' name. We pray for the people of Ukraine, those people who are running for their lives, who are making defiant stands. Lord, help them. And help them turn to you, Creator, the Maker of the heavens and the earth. But we pray that you change every heart, Lord. We pray that you change Mr. Putin's heart. And cause him to repent. Cause him to wake up. Cause him to see the difference. And the leadership around him, Lord, the same thing. Lord, we pray for peace in our, in our world. We pray for peace in our nation. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for the peace of our community, Father. As we go out these doors, may we be bearers of your light. We thank you for your forgiveness for our sins. And we thank you for healing our diseases. We thank you that in your mercy, some of us have not tasted the sickness. Lord, it's because of your blood. It's because of your mercy. It's because of your grace. And we thank you for that. Lord, you are the remedy. Your spilled blood for us is the remedy. And by faith we believe that. And we confess it to be true. And I pray that now as we go for a new week, that things would get brighter and brighter. But even if they don't, Lord, that we would stand true and sure. That you'd speak to us from your word as we go into those quiet places where you can talk with us. Lord, I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you that you're moving us forward. I pray that you continue to give us vision. And how to, how to advance as a church. How to advance as your body. What do you want us to do, Father? And let us do. Let us be obedient. No matter what the cost. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Say, Amen. 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 Alright. Well, again, thank you all for being here. And uh, I guess no guitar circle.